Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon, and today I'm bringing you a setup, play, and review of the game Patchwork Valentine's Edition. Now, this is for two lovers. As you can see, there's slight differences on the cover already. You can see the word Valentine in here, you can see the heart, you can see the fact it says for two lovers, and it says with love from Uwe Rosenberg. Aside from that, there's consumer information. Board game, no chocolates included. Okay, so in this particular game, this is an abstract strategy, two-player game. It's also a combinatorial game, and I'm deliberately not getting everything out because of space, but you will see a good example of what on earth this game is about. So this is a game that takes around 20 minutes, if that, and you are going to have your chocolate tray in the center here. It's known as the main time board. You're also going to have one of these boards each, so I'll just pick this one for the time being. And the last couple of games is actually been the one that's won both times. You're then going to be laying out these various tiles around the edge, and the aim of the game is to get the most points. The most points is defined by a few different ways, and I'll show you that in due course, and the game ends when everybody lands in the centre. So we represent two lovers, we represent cupids, and in here, this is where I tend to leave all the other bits that you'll be needing. Everybody is going to start with five buttons, or in this case, praline chits. So what I've chosen to do is give five to one player as a five, and five of these individual ones just want to do currencies and stuff like that, just so they don't get anything else out. Whilst I am still setting up, please ensure you're hitting the like button, please share, please comment, let me know what your versions are that you prefer, such as this or the maybe the, the uh, Christmas edition, maybe the Halloween edition, etc. These will go on the starting space as well, and this is going to go in the position whereby there's a certain piece in here, which is the two and the one, and that is going to be where the starting marker is going to start. Okay, so in this particular game, you're going to take it in turns, but there is a catch on that. So let's go and say, right, we're going to pick one of these characters and start moving. So initially, we are going to see where we want to start. These are petty fours, by the way, of which there are five, just to let you know. And these aren't chocolates. These are chocolates. OK, so we are now going to take our turn and see what we can purchase. What we can purchase depends on how much money or how many chits or buttons, whatever you want to call it. We generally kept calling it buttons and the next three ahead. So the next three ahead is going to cost me seven buttons, it's going to cost me uh, zero, and it's going to cost me seven. The only one I can afford is this. Now instead of doing that, I can just choose to go one space ahead of wherever my opponent is, and I'll collect that amount of buttons, so I'll collect one. In this case though, I'll be collecting nothing. I can place it anywhere I like on my board. And that's my board over here. So right now I'll place it, let's say, here. Now, at the end of the game, uh, the game finishes, remember, once we've moved enough spaces based on these time markers to land in the center. At that point, you're gonna count up how many empty spaces you have. For every empty space, you're gonna lose two victory points. You're gonna gain victory points based on how many of these chits you have left over. And lastly, you are also gonna gain another seven victory points if you happen to have this marker because you're the first person to complete a seven by seven wherever that is going to be on your grid. It doesn't always happen, and of course, uh, I've noticed in the last couple of games, it hasn't swung the game either. So I've now moved, and I had to pay the cost. So the cost here is time, and the time is three. So now I move three positions, so I'll say I'm white, because of course, I'm this grey character down here, one, two, three. It's now red's turn, and now this has moved to wherever it last was. Okay, so now we're going across and seeing where on earth we're going to go next. And in this instance, we're going to have to pick three for this character. So I had to pay no buttons, so I've still got to get my buttons here. They can't afford that, they can't afford that, they can afford that, so let's just say they do it. Remember, these aren't all of the pieces out, I'm just showing you an example. So they're now taking this one, and they're going to place it out just to keep it handy over the top here. They're paying a cost of four buttons, so spending the majority, just leaving the center or wherever you'd like to leave them. Like I said, it's going to be a lot more of them, and there is much more of a central zone you can put stuff in. They're paying four, and they're moving two. Now, this is important because they're now behind. Because they're behind, they get to go again. And they can either, again, choose to not buy anything, or maybe they can't, and they'll get two buttons because they're there, or two chits. In this instance, they could afford this. They can't afford this, and they can't afford that. So they can't afford that either. So now we have to do that. They have to do this, one, two. And now they're taking two more buttons. Now, there's a separate baggie where buttons are put in. Basically, the game comes with two baggies. And now they're taking another, another chits and another one again. Like I say, buttons seems, as they have cabbage buttons, chocolate buttons, I think buttons still works very effectively. Now it's back to my turn. I've still kept onto my five, remember? And I can buy this one, this one, this one. Can't buy that one. Could buy this one. 
I could buy this one, maybe it's better for them. I might buy, let's buy this one to show you an example of what's gonna happen. So I wanna buy this one for four. So I pay five, I get one back. And now I can place this out. Let's place it, as you can see, I'm gonna place it down here to try and keep that nice and neat. Again, you don't have to be neat. I've noticed people win going less than neat. I'm moving six because on this particular tile, I have to move six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now imagine um, we'd already gone round and now I'm into this zone. What that means, if I had to go forward six, I go one, two, three, four, five, six. I then would take this and that would go down here, wherever I want to put it. So it helps you fill in the gaps. And of course, no one else can claim that now. Additionally, when you cross any of these markers, so if I did go back to my starting point and I had crossed this, and of course, therefore, I wouldn't have taken that. I also would have been able to accumulate some more tokens. One, two, three. So I take three, and now, of course, that's allowing me to buy more stuff for my next turn. Of course, it's now Red's turn. Red might go one, two, three and afford it or not, etc. Now, this game plays out very similar to Patchwork. It is actually, in fact, identical. There's no changes whatsoever. There's a slight change up for the Halloween edition, which apparently balanced things based on thousands of plays. I've played this about 30 times and I have no intention to probably play a thousand times. Uh, there's no game I've played 1,000 times apart from poker, which is 1,000 hands, which is slightly different. And uh, what do I think of the game? Well, um, I give this game about a 7 out of 10. I think it's a probably a similar rating for me to Patchwork. And I think it's very good. Um, it is uh, it's thinky, but not too thinky. It's quick to play, like I said, 20 odd minutes. And in terms of a preference, well, of course, this is very much you know, a Valentine's theme. So you might want to just play it with your lover. You might not want to feel like playing it with anyone else. And uh, do you need to own it as well as Patchwork? Well, if you like Patchwork, if you're watching this, by all means, you might prefer to have a version specific. They obviously thought there was enough of a market there to do so. Um, I like the, uh, the idea of chocolates slightly more than uh, quilting, even though I do use a quilt. And in terms of um, just the look at it, I think it looks pretty nice. The, uh, this edging, it can be a little bit confusing for some people. It does kind of orientate it there for the setup, which I think is the better way. Otherwise it can look a bit tricky. Um, yep, like I said, some people might be finding it quite more rushing these chocolates. I think that stands out quite nicely as well. So overall, um, I think the theme uh, works. Of course, we're talking about a single day of the year as opposed to, to some respect, Christmas, which is a lot larger and obviously Halloween, which is a lot more specific, but not as specific as Valentine's. So I think the idea of a very pretty game, it makes sense to have a pretty theme, and uh, therefore I can see why this could be a hit, and this might be something you might wanna consider. Like I said, it can be a bit crunchy, and there is that whole combinatorial thing. Do I take that to stop them taking that? There's an engine building aspect, whereby early on you're playing something like 10, to get three of these buttons, which allow you to score each time they go round. These don't score, but these do. And therefore, even though it's gonna cost you 10, at this point, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This will score you, actually cost you nothing at the end of the game. And actually by covering up six bases, well, that saved you 12 victory points. So there's a whole load of stuff you consider, but ultimately you do need to be able to afford 10 initially. So the game is a lot deeper than you anticipate. This is my 26th Uwe Rosenberg game. I believe I've played, it might even be 27th. Uh, Second Chance is one of my favorite ones of this style, uh, which is this kind of polyomino ones, and is in fact on my 10 by 10. By all means, you can check out my other playlists. My other playlists will include how to set up, play and review. There's also other ones which are specifically two player games, such as this. And again, if you hadn't considered maybe patchwork, if you're curious to know how this particular edition looked, I highly recommend it. And the way I pack this away is your Petty Fours go in here, the Cupids, a five token, and probably just another five token, and take the change as you need it. Like I said, any other questions, let me know. Loads more videos coming to the channel, loads more coming daily presently, and I look forward to seeing you and your comments on those next ones as well. This has been Patchwork Valentine's Edition, and this has been Amass Games.